<coughs> Hello there once again. Yeah, this is me, Al. And I've just woken up from about a two days sleep. Great and chipper and ready to continue on with um, our project. Uh, however, before continuing, um, I want to make uh, one small correction. Uh, well, two corrections. Uh, one uh, is more of an oversight, and one is just a straight up correction. The oversight is uh, something I noticed in the code here. Uh, this code that I downloaded and I'm playing with uh, didn't come out of, out, of the, uh, out of the air, but somebody sat down and wrote it, and has not been given any credit by me so far in this uh, um, section. So I'd like to rectify that. And uh, this is the name of the person. Pronunciation unknown. Xiao, Xiao Ali. Uh, and that's his email address. And he's the one that wrote the little GOM server as it was initially. Uh, of course, it looks nothing like the initial version at this point. But uh, so be it. He wrote it, and uh, and that helped us in our quest to understand Kong. Helped a lot, really. Now, one of the things I did in uh, this part, the standard exports part, was um, uh, print out these various things I said that I figured out. Uh, and one of them, that's, this is the correction part. Uh, previously, I had, I had one extra dereference to this. Look at the history. Mm. Oh. Let's try that again. Hang on a second. Okay, nothing to reboot can't uh, fix. Um, here, if you'll notice, uh, previously um, I had one extra star here. Um, the, the address of the tape, uh, no, that's, that's right, the comments are saying. The address of the table is just uh, uh, star of the uh, I unknown plus eight bytes. Okay, well, that's two D words. And then I've re recast that as a pointer to hold star. So that really is the address of the dispatch table. And then star, that ain't starting it again, gives the address of the first function, which is query, always query interface. And now I've added a third function to count up the number of functions exposed by the interface. The one thing I should do is add another function, because, well, you'll see in a second, the, the number of functions exposed by this interface, I'll put a break right here, is going to be 5. And why is it going to be 5? Because the uh, requested object here, as you'll see, is not the object uh, my interface. Uh, it's requesting the factory object, uh, I class factory, which we dutifully make a uh, class factory of our interface. But class factory derives from this uh, interface which is an I unknown plus two extra functions, right? So that makes a total of five functions. Whereas the math object, um, where is the math object? Maybe up here. Here's the math object. Uh, it also has, is an I unknown plus two extra functions, which is five. So we're going to get five no matter what. 
what I could do is add one more function to this, and then we can t tell, you know, we're getting the right one. So why don't I add one more function? What can we do? The square root? Call it square root, making a pointer too long. And now we need to implement it. We need to do a couple things. We need to add the function, implement it. So this part will be the same. Uh, I want to make sure the value is positive. Then I guess we return uh, E fail or something. I don't know what the standard return codes are. They're probably fun to do that. A more handle pointer. Oh, invalid. That sounds better. Invalid on it. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll just do it like this. Well, one, L, return is SQ on square root. If we cast this as a double or something. Right. Uh, and we want to place that value into the file. And in keeping with this, this useless accumulator, I'll add that to the accumulated results. Okay. Let's Part two, what we would need to do, I'm going to add that method to our class definition, right? Now that should work, I think. Find my interface is modified properly. Three functions. Okay, so that's a total of six for this one. If it compiles. And I would, what I'd like to be able to do, we need math.e for something. There's a standard head with math functions. Which I may need to be searching for. Okay, that's the right one. We'll recast this as a one. Okay, I want to make sure that that works. Value is something that was entered in. We can do it first or last or income we like. We'll put it at the end. We to keep refreshing this on temp. Square root of address on temp and it's the same essentially. I'd like to turn this into a macro. Maybe I should. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, the thing we're recording is the result of operation. Oh. Should be this thing. Let's say this string. Now, I could use my do while false or something to make it into a unit, but this is okay. Good enough. Now, uh, I just want to point out as since I put a, I put a break point so here, what what the what com itself is asking for is C. Uh, DLL main got called, and then get class object gets called, and this identifier here is for a I factory interface, not for a, my class or anything, just anything that derives from I factory, right? Okay. Now first we're checking to see if it's the right class. That's the first number. And that ends up being true. I print that out. Uh, the, path, the reference class ID is equal to our class. So this is this is the right DLL for the given ID. So I'm just trying to make the printer informative. And this is, you know, I could have explained this, but so now we're checking uh, if a new instance of class factory, right, implements the factory interface. Well, obviously it does because it's a factory, right? And so we, that's definitely not going to fail. So we, it wants a factory, so we can make a factory. And the thing that this factory produces are it, these things. That's another thing I should have correct, I suppose. Sorry for the noise. Hang on a sec. I've been saying, and I said last time, that there's only one, there's ever only one and one uh, object being referred to. Uh, and that's true. There's only one type of object being referred to. Uh, when they talk about class or object, com object, but you, you can have certainly more than one uh, of, of the outer object, like the spaceship from the last video. You could have two spaceships, but still, there's only one object ever being referred to in that. <clears throat> That's a spaceship. You could have two separate spaceships, and, and using some of those methods, that uh, one could. Um, determine which interface belongs with which spaceship and so on. So now here I'm uh, determining with through my magic method the address of the dynamic, dynamic dispatch table 
or PCF. Now PCF is, is not a my interface, it's a class factory. Now according to the, this, it's 9A088. -A Oops, and a 1 here. One zero zero nine a eight eight double two. All right. Now this here uh, is a one of those dynamic dispatch tables. Okay, and you can see there are one, two, three. There's four, five. There are five entries. Now the first entry, 1032, should be the address of the query interface. I star that. All this function does is star the previous one. So at uh, 100.1032 should be the address of query interface for this for this object. Now, can we prove that? That's certainly the first entry in the table. Turns out this thing has a go-to. You can put in that address. Um, 1032. So definitely that's query interface, right? So that's correct. So query interface, the factory's query interface function is located there. Uh, now, how many functions? I can count five here before we hit the zero. And that's all this function does. We'll step into it. First, I get the address of the dynamic dispatch table. Okay. Uh, now, this is a weird thing. but it's probably being misinterpreted by the uh, compiler in some way or another. First, another thing we can check Oops. I I know it's going to be in the read-only area. Notice how the read-only area starts at 9,000 this time. It's, it's changed some reason. I guess we hit some limit. And uh, the dynamic dispatch table is presumably at 9A88. Nine A eighty eight. That's the first. That's the first one here. I guess one two yeah. So ten thirty two, and there were five functions. Uh, so start count equals zero, and it, so I just loop it. Through the functions, adding uh, one more pointer value each time <coughs> and implementing the count. And indeed, the result is 5. So you can see that's why I changed the, uh, the other thing that this object. Um, 
that we just created is not a my interface. My interface has six functions, this has five. So the output is uh, number of uh, functions exposed by factory, it's five expecting five. So it's correct in, in that sense. Now what we're doing is we're querying the querying this factory thing to see if it supports the interface by you know class factory, right? Well, of course it's going to, right? Uh, because it, it is one. Uh, and then it's going to store something in PP out. Now, the question is, what is it going to store there? It should store exactly this value, PCF, uh, which is 14 1D B. If I can uh, remember that, 14 D1 BE8. Copy that. Oh, wait, I can. Okay, that should be the return value, I believe. Well, we step in. No, no. We get the. Uh, I'm just getting this for printout. Uh, so we're in this function uh, query interface, and the interface queried asked for is a factory, any kind of I thing derived from I factory. Uh, and I'm asserting this. Nobody would call this for I on you, but who knows? I'm leaving it in here as it was. <clears throat> now, if, if the identifier given is I unknown, definitely support that. Or if it's an I class factory identifier, we definitely support that. Those two. So, let uh, print it out. Object certainly supports the I class factory interface because it is one. So, into star thingy goes. Uh, F0. So it's not the same. Oh, I see. Because there's a cast here, maybe. Wait, this is F0. Oh, I see, I see. But of all these things <laughs> seem to have a tendency to go up and down by 8. What am I screw up? E. If you add 8 to this E8, right, you get F0. And what's being returned? One for D1 B, right? And add 8 to this and you get F0. There's something about 8. I don't know exactly what it is. But, um, Often I notice that uh, the uh, these kinds of this pointers are eight more than the C plus plus this. I want the disassembly of where we are. Okay. See the plus eight here. Mm -hmm. And then subtract eight. Mm -hmm. But there's something about adding eight. Oh, let's see, because the this pointer is between passed in on the stack. Anyway. We're always plus or minus eight from the from right answer. 
Turn F OK, so this thing is going to be star that. There's going to be eight more than I was pointing, I think. Painting him out. Yeah. And PCF. I see. It's eight more than this thing. Okay. So there's a, it seems like there's a plus eight always to switch from C++ object to com object for some reason. Uh, so it would have been enough to just add eight to this, the result of this new and return that in here. Now this is going to be important because I want to do all of this manually. That is, uh, start from here. here. And I'd like to do this step and this step and all of these steps without making use of any calm um, things. I know what to do about this, right? That is, I go to the registry, I look up the, this value, right? And that tells me the address of a DLL, which I'm, I load it to memory. Then I call the DLL's function um, get class object and the identifier for a factory, right? That'll get us into here. Um, and to create a new object, I ask the factory to generate a one of these things. You see, we should be able to do it all with regular function calls. And if we get, get the pointers right, plus eight, plus 8 and minus 8 properly, it, it should work. Uh, so anyway, now that's done. I don't know if it ends up coming in here again. No. No, it went through a bunch of stuff. And I found out that this bumping up and bumping down happens completely outside of uh, our thing. And I think I know the reason why it does this. Uh, well, that's a pretty great point for um, it's add ref and release ref, right? Uh, here. If I run through this again, get rid of that. Let's see if that works fine. Here's an add ref that we know about from query interface. No problem. Now here's one from create instance. No problem. That we would expect an add ref. Now here's one. It's just a direct call to add ref from OLE32. Okay. Uh, and following that, there's going to be a release immediately, turns out, uh, from the same spot. Now it turns out that the return value from release tells you the number of references on a particular object. Okay, so if you want to find out the number of references on an object, 
you would add ref and release and the return value from release will tell you how many references there are presently right this return value will be one one see and i think ole is just trying to it's just trying to get that return value to make sure everything is fine and nothing bad is going on they tell you that in the help file, turns out that um, this return value is the number of references. And, um, and I remember that from years ago. And take from next not come. I'm trying to find a place where I can really get it. The help file but bring up something. <coughs> they say don't don't rely on that value. And that, that that statement is stuck in my head for years and years, twenty odd years. I said, I'm always remembering that uh, you shouldn't rely on that value. However. The reason they say that probably is because uh, people might not implement release properly. But in this case, at, right at the beginning, I think uh, you can rely on it for during the construction phase. Because the only, well, if it comes out wrong, certainly uh, maybe they could. Uh, the system can tell you that there's something wrong. Okay, manage info. Yeah. Uh, release. I am no release. Somewhere in here it says. not to rely on the return value. Return the resulting re reference count. You know where I read that? Anyway, you're not supposed to depend on it, but I think in this case uh, that's what's going on. If it's just trying to make sure that the reference count is one, there's only one reference to the uh, factory object. I don't think we would ever create more than one factory. Maybe. <coughs> In any case, uh, yeah, the factory is going to get called again. Oops. Okay, class factory, and that's that's deleting this pointer for. The factory. New instance of my interface gets created. Oh, from the add ref, maybe. Where's that factory gone? 
create instance, I see. And it will create instance. Um, of a whatever called through the factory um, creates a new element which is the type of thing that the factory builds and then again whenever we just return think like new things we go we go Call query interface on the object created for the thing that is to be returned, and that I suppose is how the reference counter reference count gets bumped up automatically. And I bet once again this value is going to be eight more than this value. Okay, but we're not there yet, are we? We're about to eight hundred. Where are we on? The factory got deleted. We didn't need it anymore. And again, that does it have a great point on release? So I'll get rid of I'll get rid of this. Now uh, we haven't really stepped through it, but I just want to ensure that these things work properly. So we're gonna go square cube and square root. Look. Okay, square, square the number is that, cube the number is that, and the square root is 21, that's probably right, approximately. 21 times 21 is 400 something, right? So it's working. Now we, I can also call those functions, for instance, if I want to know how many uh, methods are supported by a P, this p mine thing. I can find out. Number of exposed. Do the same as before, which was none functions instead of just one function. It's not PCF, it's PMI. It should come out six because I added one extra. <coughs> Oh, I don't have access to that mm -hmm. different project. Well, what else can we do? Query interface. Where is this take us? I could rewrite the same function. Um, here, I can put it here. If I want.
มาฝ่ายที่มาสักเวลาไม่ไหวมาสักกูเห็น I I oh yeah that is my interface it's a weird old number F six something anyway it's gonna come up to six and let me see my time okay let me just copy the function over Okay. F D F D. It has to be an I unknown thing. Maybe I need the address of that. Before, how was I using it? Before I was using it, passing PCF in. Ah, PCF is not an interface pointer, so I have to subtract eight. Okay, fair enough. Um, see, it's a D word point here. And subtract two from, and that would be subtracting eight bytes, wouldn't it be? Might work if it's a keyboard pointer, and I take away two. Let's take two. I can look at the disassembly. Well, first let's see what happens. Who's that? I am the only thing. It looks better. Address of dispatch table. A to E zero. Star of that looks correct. Query interface. It is correct. And the answer is six. See? It's not that hard. There's this plus or minus uh, eight, which seems to be the way to go from interface pointer to uh, that, that internal pointer, and vice versa. Either you subtract or add eight. <coughs> and uh, when these calls are made. There's probably a subtract 8 at some point or add 8.
this here. Anyway, that's something I gotta look closer at. If I want to do this call correctly using this just using this pointer and uh, not using any funny arrows or anything, I want to make sure that I'm calling the right well here I know how to do it. this thing certainly retrieves to me the function function is retrieving the the uh, dispatch table and counting through the functions so I can certainly find the function the three functions their addresses and uh, the only problem is what do we push on the stack do we push p mine on the stack or do we push uh, p mine minus eight I think probably you know maybe we don't subtract eight in this case it wants an interface pointer. E A X one three something one B one eight. Here is the function. Something I gotta figure out. But you see how it's it's working, it's coming together. Alright, well I'll leave it there for now and make sure that I get this right. And uh, I'm hoping that by the next video we can uh, get rid of all this stuff and, and do it all manually and see that it works. Uh, this is actually this program is missing a Almost that I have, have an initialized unit and an uninitialized balance. And there should be one there too. So I need an auto uninitialized or something. Okay. We'll get to that next time. See ya.